Nothing good ever happens on the main floor. All the action is deep down below in the darkest depths of the dungeon. So today, we're going downstairs. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. This episode, I'm going to be building some stairs. And not some stairs that just sit on top of your tiles. I'm going to be building actual descending stair tiles. These integrate with my three by three basic dungeon tiles and they serve to represent a descending staircase. It's easy to build stairs going up. You just build some stairs that sit on top of your tiles. Stairs going down are a little bit more challenging because you can't exactly have a big hole in your gaming table with stairs going down. I try to solve that problem in a simple and elegant way by having some descending stairs in a tile that represent a descending staircase without actually having a big hole in your table. This is not a really complicated build. I think that you will find it inspiring and I'm sure you will get some use out of it. I'm gonna be using my hot wire table to build this, but this again is another great project that you can accomplish just with a knife. These don't have to be cut super precisely. You can do it with a knife. There's a lot of room for error and heck, you could build this out of cardboard, whatever. It's the basic principle of representing these stairs that I wanna focus on today. So let's build some damn stairs. So start out with a blank tile. Use the same size tile that you use for your regular set. In my case, that is a three by three tile out of half inch XPS foam. These stairs are gonna have a half inch border along three sides of the tile. So using a small carpenter square, I mark out that half inch line on three sides before cutting it out on the hot wire table. Now using the line that I marked out and a rip fence to keep the cut straight, I first cut one side of this cutout, turn the machine off, adjust my rip fence and cut the other line. At the end of this cut, I quickly turn off the power to the hot wire and turn my piece 90 degrees, then reset my rip fence and complete the cut. I then take that center cutout, which will act as the actual steps and break it down into four individual layers. Because this piece is half an inch thick, in theory, those layers should be an eighth of an inch thick each. But to be honest, I just eyeballed it. You just gotta get four slices out of this piece. It's also a good idea to keep the layers in the order that you cut them so that when you assemble them later as stairs, they fit together nicely. Here I'm taking the border piece and drawing in some stonework. You can do this with whatever stone carving method you normally use. In this case, I'm trying out something I saw on the Tabletop Crafters Guild Facebook group, which is using a fine tipped Sharpie marker to draw the grout lines because the solvent in the marker will actually slightly melt the foam and actually make a groove for you. To add a nice bit of stone texture, I'm using the tried and tested tinfoil ball technique. Yes, I know it's no longer made of tin, it's made of aluminum, it's just the name that we use. You don't hang up your cell phone in a literal sense when you end a call, it's just part of our vernacular. Chill. Now I'm taking the layers for the stairs, and on each one I'm going to cut it one stair width shorter. In this case, because of the length of the piece, that's 5 eighths of an inch. So on the bottom piece, I'm marking the first 5 eighths increment with a little tick so I know where to glue it. On the next piece, I'm cutting off an additional 5 eighths and then marking the next one. Man, I'm sounding like Wylock here with all these measurements. Just cut these pieces in a way that you can stack them in stairs. Using your tin foil, I mean aluminum foil, I mean aluminium foil for you Brits, give the stairs some texture as well. You only need to do it in the parts that will be exposed so your little ticks will help you know where that is. It's also a good idea to use the tin foil to kind of break the edge of the stairs so it's not such a hard cut line and it looks a little bit more like a weathered step edge. 
Now you can assemble your layers of steps using some hot glue. Those little measurement marks, again, will help you know where not to put the glue. You can use PVA for this, but it's really not necessary. You can get away with the hot glue here and it will actually add a nice amount of rigidity and strength to these thin pieces. You can then go ahead and draw out some stonework on the actual steps using the same method that you used on the border piece. Now to assemble these, hot glue is gonna be your best friend, but you're gonna wanna put down some non-stick paper like some grease paper or some parchment paper Go along the three edges of your stairs that will be covered, apply some hot glue very carefully, and then insert it into the border piece. It's a good idea to kind of flex out the sides of the border piece, slide the stairs in and squeeze it back together while the glue cools and sets. The parchment paper will make sure that this doesn't accidentally get glued to your work surface while doing this. You can also strengthen that cut by adding some hot glue to the edge of it and then flipping it over and squishing it flat onto the parchment paper. Those of you that saw my video about making tiles stop sliding around, this also is serving that purpose. And before painting, I do my usual coat of Mod Podge and black paint to strengthen the foam as well as get in all the little seams and crevices and really bond everything together. And for paint, you're going to want to match whatever you've done on your main set of tiles. In my case, it's a very basic paint job of a dark gray, a regular kind of medium gray, and then a very light dry brushing with an off white. Really making sure to hit those edges of the stairs as well as the perimeter of the stairwell in the hopes that it really kind of separates the depth of the stair from the main tile. Then just like my basic dungeon tile set, I give these a liberal coating of a basic black wash. And because I really wanted the edges of these stairs to stand out, I actually went back in after the wash with my medium gray to kind of dry brush and bring out the edges of the stairs a little bit more. And for a little bit of extra embellishment, I applied some fine green flocking using a very watered down PVA glue. After everything was completely dry, I gave all the pieces a very liberal coating in Minwax polyurethane. This serves to seal everything in, including that flocking. It enhances the color and it's gonna make sure that these pieces last a long time on my game table. While these may not be a perfect solution, I think they do a pretty decent job of representing a descending staircase in a fairly eloquent way that blends nicely with my existing tile set. I hope that you found this video useful and inspiring, and if you did, hit the like button and drop me a comment below. If you are not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, and if you are a subscriber, hit that little bell icon so you can be notified of all the other stuff going on with this channel aside from videos in your newsfeed. If you need to pick up any of the tools and supplies that I use to accomplish my builds that I recommend, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There you will find my essential equipment store with all of the stuff that I recommend. You can purchase them on Amazon and doing so through those links sends a small commission to the channel that helps fund these videos. On the subject of funding these videos, if you really want to help out Black Magic Craft and keep these videos going strong, and improving, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. There you can become the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship, which is a cool private Facebook group where you can hang out with me and a bunch of other awesome crafters and get tips and tricks and help from me, ask me questions, suggest video ideas, all that good stuff. This is the first episode of the new year of 2018 and guys i cannot wait to see what the rest of the year brings for this hobby and this channel until next week guys cheers happy crafting <laughs> <laughs>